Ghost stories told by children are some of the most provoking tales I've come across. Few young children are able to fantasize or confabulate believable stories, so here's one of my favorites, one of which offers no easy explanation. Helen Kackener of Queensbury, New York, a wonderful Adirondack storyteller, collected this tale from the Daly family, longtime residents of Washington County, New York. In 1881, Isabel Henry Daly presented her husband, Patrick Bryan, with a beautiful daughter, also named Isabel. The Daly's had farmed a piece of land east of Hudson Falls, along the banks of the Champlain Canal for years, and grew prize-winning potatoes. Their immediate area, called Dunham's Basin, is the site of the junction of the Old Feeder Canal and the 60-mile-long Champlain Canal. After major rainstorms and the resulting water runoff, the area is prone to sudden flooding. Canal fans remember that the present-day Champlain Canal was rerouted by New York State in 1913, leaving the old original ditch abandoned, though it is still visible today. And it is near this old canal that these events took place long before the new channel was excavated. Little Isabel had reached the age of eight at the time of our story in the springtime of 1889. When Isabel was about six and a half or seven years old, she lost her favorite grandpa, Grandpa Henry, and he adored her. This little girl was his youngest grandchild, and he just thought she was, he knew she was special. Oh, it's great to be a kid eight years old on a Saturday. And you got your room all picked up. And your mom has said, yes, you can go across the canal this afternoon. Isabel went with your cousins. And that's what she did. That was April. It was a beautiful spring day. Not a cloud in the sky. And she was free. So she skipped across this narrow iron bridge, which connected the daily farm on one side of the canal to more daily farms on the other side, OK? About 4 p.m., however, the cloud cover off to the west thickened and darkened. Flashes of lightning appeared on the horizon, and a downpour ensued. It rained heavily for an hour before abating, and the water level rose dangerously as torrents of rain poured from the feeder canal and into the Champlain Canal, rising almost to the towpath at the top. Patrick, Isabel's father, became concerned that supper time had arrived, but Isabel had not. He decided to walk the path to the old bridge to see if he could see his daughter approaching on the trail to home. His heart skipped a beat when he reached the canal. The flash flood had swept away the bridge, and the water was dangerously high. Isabel didn't know how to swim. Had a horrible accident befallen his daughter? He instantly recalled how the child feared the booming noise and lightning flashes of thunderstorms, and he nervously scanned the canal banks. No sight of little Isabel. PB then began pacing the muddy old towpath. There was no way to cross the canal to search for the child, and he was greatly fearful for Isabel's safety. He was startled when he spotted his daughter skipping southward towards him on the path. This could not be. Isabel, child, how did you ever cross the canal, he begged. Oh, she said, Dad. Grandpa Dad, they carried me. Or Dad didn't think much of that. Now, child, this is no time to be telling me stories, he said sternly. He was well aware that Grandfather Henry had died over two years before. But, Danny, I am not telling you a story. This is not a lie. I got down to the edge of the canal, no bridge, and I said, what am I going to do? And then I looked around, there was Grandpa Henry. He said, child, <coughs> what you was doing? Got a problem? He says, Grandpa, the bridge is gone. How am I going to get home for supper? Oh, he said, don't worry, Isabel. Just tuck yourself up here, let me pick you up. I'll carry your cross. And he did. PB didn't know what to say. Surely his child stood before him, and just as surely, there was no way to cross the canal for miles in any direction. Yet here was his precious Isabel, dry and happy. For years to come, after PB's death, the Daly family repeatedly told the story in wonder of the apparent miracle. For her part, Isabel recounted the story until the time of her own death, never deviating from the facts of long ago. Until his death, Patrick Brian Daly continued to puzzle over his part in a great mystery that he could not fathom. All he knew is that love had prevailed. He loved Isabel as much as Grandfather Henry had, and that was that. Everything else, even death, was just details. <laughs>